six minutes of sex burns about 21 calories. That's not a lot. Not a lot. That's not a lot. Which means I burn about three calories. <laughs> <laughs> Your mother will be disgusted that you were talking about that. <laughs> Are we now hybrid athletes? That's a proper wanky phrase, that, isn't it? I can't stand it, honestly. But when it comes to fat loss, it genuinely makes life so much harder. And you think yeah. it wouldn't because it's yeah. like, oh, I'm doing a lot of cardio, I'm moving a lot more, I'll be burning loads of calories. And it's like, yeah, you will but it's knackering. Like it's really hard Very, work. very fatiguing. And sticking to a low calorie diet when you are absolutely knackered and starving mm -hmm. after a high rock session or a CrossFit session, or whatever, is really fucking difficult. Really difficult. The vast majority of people who are now classing themselves as like hybrid athletes, etc., they still have a background yeah. predominantly in bodybuilding. They spent right? a lot of years weightlifting first. Spent a long time weightlifting, building muscle, and now they've just kind of thrown running into the mix, etc. Eight o'clock in the morning, I'll have fish and a rice cake. Welcome back. Welcome back. Fish and a rice cake. Yep. I'm yep. Jake. I'm Jake as well. Or Dave, however you want to call him, <laughs> refer to him. Um, and we are here to give you some non sciency <laughs> Definitely after <laughs> always <episode>. ran <laughs> always ranty <laughs> or sometimes ranty fitness advice which should hopefully help you get yourself into shape and whatever that might look like building muscle dropping some body fat yeah anything yeah. like that anything like yeah. that um, which listen let's be honest about it is probably better than watching England right now yeah so as of right now we are two days away from the Switzerland game Switzerland game yeah so we've just we've had the Slovakia game on Sunday and it was just fucking awful. It's so bad, mate, isn't it? It's so bad. Honestly, like I've had so many conversations with people about it all week. And the thing that baffles me the most, and we don't know what the outcome is right now, so we could be in the final and it's coming home and everyone's having a great time. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but right now, it's not. I've actually just this week signed up uh, two lads from Slovakia, Patrick and Tomas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was almost like, I don't, I, I feel bad charging them because they deserve the win from that game. England did not deserve that win at oh. all. I was talking to Patrick whilst the game was going on, and I was like, this is, and I'm not even a big football person. We've spoken about that loads on this, like, but I've I've got quite into this Euros. I've started watching a lot of the um, stick to football and the rest is football yeah, stick to football is good. good. Stick to football's is brilliant. Uh, Kino and getting and yeah, stuff. Yet. Yeah, class. but class. we'll get them on the podcast just, one day. Yeah. <laughs> if, if we've got time. Um, but yeah, they've just been so bad. It's just so shocking, bad. mate. And it, the thing that annoys me the most, right, is everyone in the country, even you, who doesn't, you know, not massively into football, can see that it's not working. Yeah. Like, everybody can see that it's disjointed, it's dysfunctional, it's fucking shit. Me and Soph have started playing a game, and we were doing it in the Slovakia match, where every time England get the ball, we make Go a back. prediction of how many passes it'll be before we're back in our own yeah, half, yeah. or before the keeper's got it again. I know, I know. And we, to be fair, we were, we were constantly just like, three passes, four passes, and every time it was like, yep, four Straight passes back. back in, three passes back in. A few, of my, a few of my mates are going out for the match on Saturday, or they're going to one of my mates who's got a pub in his back garden, like a proper, genuine pub mm. in his back garden. And they're doing a drinking game, and it's like little things like every time Trippier turns backwards, you've <laughs> got to take a shot. It's like fucking hell. Like well, he's the... on his wrong foot, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So he's he got is. to turn in every single time. Well, he does, and that's kind of part of the issue, isn't it? Because he didn't take a left back. Yeah. Like, just ridiculous. I know he took Luke Shaw, but he's not fit. So you, you just take a second left back, so at least you've got someone natural. Mm. Even if they're not as good as Luke Shaw. You've still got a natural left back playing it opens on the up left. The player down that the side, play, yeah. It? yeah. And then you've got Foden. Look at me, I sound like I know what I'm on about. And then you play. You've got Foden playing ahead of him, who that, who's playing out of position as well, because obviously he's a number ten, so he normally plays more central. Mm. So both Trippier and Foden are wanting to come drift inside. Mm. So we've got no width on the. Line. It's just bad, mate. It's just bad. And Kane just doesn't even look like he wants to be there. Kane the just time. Kane's just all over the place. And what annoys me about Kane? He's dropping deep, so he's dropping deep to get the ball. You've got Bellingham dropping deep. You've got Foden coming inside. So you've got no one actually running in behind. Or it, staying in the positions. Do you know what annoyed me most about the Slovakia game? And I think I've said this about 10 times on check-ins yesterday. Um, just when I was doing feedback to like the clients that I know watching the football. After Bellingham scored that that equaliser, which to be fair, like good goal. Mm. Really, really good goal. Impressive. The way he celebrated it was like, came across so arrogant. And what, because he said like, who else or something who like else? that, didn't yeah, he? Said who else? And I'm like, I'm not being funny, but you've scored in the 96th minute to equalize. You've done shit for three and a half games. 
there's n you've done the bare minimum of your job. There's nothing to be arrogant about in mm -hmm. that situation. Like you should literally just be head down, get the ball, crack back, back on. Yeah, no, I completely agree, mate. Like he's obviously got, he's got a lot of shit for that in the press. I mean, I like Bellingham. He's obviously an unbelievable player, but like you say, he's been everyone's been shit, but he's been shit as well. Yeah, so yeah. Like, you know, just get on with it. Unless you're doing that against fucking France in the final. Yeah, I don't want that. You know, no, you no, just want to no. see him crack on. Yeah. So you've organised a table. You and Sam have organised a table for Saturday, haven't you? Yes. For so we're going the, to the pitch room after the group of... shoot for everyone to go watch the football or yeah. whoever wants to watch it. Yeah. So we've got the um, photo shoot at two, football at five, burgers at eight, beer pong, beer pong at, pong at half nine. Yeah. It's a pretty full on day. And then from there, <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's gonna could be a good one though. Be a good one. It is going to be a good one. I'm looking forward to it. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with a football. <laughs> Probably get beat if we play like that, like we did at the weekend. You know, Switzerland will beat us. Well, they there look you go, good to be fair. They're Switzerland well. really good. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So, but we'll see. Hopefully, by the time you are listening to us watching this this episode, we have managed to sort it out, and we are, and it's coming home. Well, this <laughs> this will be coming out not next week, the week after. So the whole tournament will be done then. Will it? So two weeks today, the yeah, whole tournament, tournament will be done. Will be done. Well, there we go. We'll so, know. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. We could be eating our words right now. We could. Hopefully probably, we probably are. Not. Probably, <laughs> not, <though. laughs> probably not. Yeah. So, um, what are we actually talking about? I is, don't know. You planned it. Oh, yeah. I thought you asked me. <laughs> are we now hybrid athletes? <laughs> it's a proper wanky phrase, that, isn't it? I can't stand it, honestly. And that's one of the reasons I opened the the, uh, the episode with it, because it is very clickbaity. Mm. Obviously, at the moment, me and Jake have decided to run a marathon. What a fucking mistake that was. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, it was really your idea more than mine. That's what annoys me more. Yeah. Is that I've gone into it being like, yeah, fuck it, we'll do it. Why is yeah. it different? And just now... very blase, like, yeah, well, do, you, do you fancy running a marathon? Uh, I mean, if, if you want. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of how the conversation went. So we're obviously both currently uh, training for that. And that by 90% of kind of Instagram content creators nowadays would put you down as a, as a hybrid athlete. Yeah. It really annoys me because I'm like, well, actually, that means I've always been a hybrid because I've always done a bit of running, I've always yeah. done a bit of lifting, yeah. I've always played football. Like the the definition of a hybrid athlete is trying to improve yourself at two separate things at one time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So essentially, two things that shouldn't kind of you could try and become a really good swimmer and shot putter, and you yeah. technically be a hy hybrid athlete. That, yeah, that'd be a, a hybrid athlete. Yeah. Some people think an, a, like Hyrox is is hybrid but it's not some people no, it's say not, that it's cross like specific for that exactly so although you are doing different things within high rocks yeah. everything is geared towards that yeah. one sport so these are two separate things so for example at the moment you're trying to gain muscle and you're also trying to get good at running two things which mm. most people would say you wouldn't do at the same time yeah that's why people call themselves hybrid athletes. And it's gone it's gone a bit viral. I don't know. I think when you put it in like your hook and stuff like that. Well, I think it's because like of the popularity with like CrossFit training and, mm. and everything. And I think because of the CrossFit we've spoken about this before, but like the CrossFit style physique is a much more, I would argue, That's certainly true. attainable. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying it's easy to get because it's not, but when you look at a CrossFitter compared to a professional bodybuilder, everyone's going to want to look like the CrossFitter or 99% of people are yeah. going to want to look like a CrossFitter. So I think I think that's definitely got something to do with it. Yeah, definitely. But again, I think we've spoken about this before. The vast majority of people who are now classing themselves as like hybrid athletes, etc., they still have a background yeah. predominantly in bodybuilding. They spent right? a lot of years weightlifting first. Spent a long time weightlifting, building muscle, and now they've just kind of thrown running into the mix, etc. Mm. So... In, in in short, we're not hybrid athletes. I would not class my I wouldn't even class myself as a runner. No. <laughs> not at all. We're literally just fucking two idiots who've decided to do a stupid challenge. And the primary focus of our training is still for me, certainly, is still like in the gym. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's still what I want to focus on more than anything else. That's still that is still for me my number one goal is to yeah. push my weights up in the gym, push my numbers up, bring my body weight up. Maybe not loads, just because again the impact that'll have on my knees, yeah. my ankles when I'm running. Which is why I'm actually trying to lose a bit, mm. just to make me a bit more economical. Yeah, um, and that's going. I think the f I don't know about um, how yours is going. I think the first couple of weeks for me when I've because I'm like six. I did my sixth run this morning, yeah. which was only a three k. It was really small. Um, but I've done a, about three or four. I've done three five k's. I've done a ten k and a twelve k. They've all felt oh, pretty good. Okay, yeah. the three k this morning was horrible. I don't know what was going on, but my ankles and my knees this morning just, just not having throbbing, it. and they felt fine like yeah. the day before. Um, but I've got to do twelve k. I might do fifteen in the morning just see how I feel on the run. Yeah. Um, but, but 
one thing that has definitely just in the first couple of weeks is just the fatigue and doms from running again. Mm. That has impacted like my deadlifting and my squats for the first two weeks. Yeah, I think but that's it will do. To settle down now. Yeah, I think it will. Um, I mean, naturally, of course, if you you know you you're training that much volume running wise, it's gonna take a, it's gonna have a little bit of an impact initially. But I do think you know I do think there's a crossover here as well because naturally, you know, the the fitter you get. Like that's also going to help with your weight training. Yeah, you know, you recover, you recover quicker, all that kind of stuff. Um, so there's definitely things which kind of cross over as well. Um, but I think I'm up to it. So I'm going to try and do 20k tomorrow. That's that's what I'm going to do. That's what you're going for. Yeah, 20k tomorrow. Um, just nice and slow though. That's not far off a half marathon, is it? Yeah, half marathon is like 21. Okay. Yeah. Might as well just do a half. You can do 20. Why not do 21? (laughs) Well, I've done a half here this year, mate. (laughs) Completed it. Completed it. So. But um, that is, it's going all right. But, you know, I think it was one of them where, like, I think a few people have been taking the piss while well, I messaged it and saying, oh, you're a hybrid athlete now. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not. And I'm never going to claim to be. I'm never going to put it in any of my content or anything like that. Um, I just think it's a very wanky phrase that's thrown around just in order to kind of, almost kind of get authority. I don't know what it is. It's, it's so hard. I think as well, I, you know, a lot of coaches use it as like, they'll put their hybrid athlete athletes or they train people to be hybrid athletes because again it, it's quite in at the minute it's quite yeah, it's trendy. very in very in very trendy but when it comes to fat loss it genuinely makes life so much harder and you think yeah. it wouldn't because it's yeah. like oh i'm doing a lot of cardio i'm moving a lot more i'll be burning loads of calories and it's like yeah you will but it's knackering like it's really hard very work. very fatiguing and sticking to a low calorie diet when you are absolutely knackered and starving mm-hmm. after a high rock session or a crossfit session whatever is really fucking difficult really difficult and that's something we say a lot don't we so when whenever we do like a, a photo shoot prep with someone say i know we've both kind of worked with crossfitters and stuff like that mm. when we go into a prep and their primary focus obviously in that prep is to get lean yeah so we'll say listen we probably need to kind of dial that down or come away from it for a couple of weeks at least yeah um, so I, I literally as a comparison i've got on saturday we've got our group shoot yeah right I've got Ian that's just done, he's done a shoot earlier this year and he's just done a bodybuilding show. Mm-hmm. He's coming into the group shoot and his training has been the exact same until this week where we pulled back a little bit on his yeah. training. Then I've got a couple of CrossFitters that are doing the exact same photo shoot and we pulled their training volume down about four weeks ago because we were literally like, it's that demanding and you're getting that hungry and that tired. We need to start pulling it all back now. Yeah. And that's just the difference in like the start. Ian just trains in the gym, weightlifting, does his cardio on the Stairmaster. He's been able to just push, 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 push until yeah. this week, the week before where we taper down. They've had to like taper down well before it because yeah. we noticed it was starting to affect the cravings, the hunger, their appetite, their energy. It does. It really does. Things. And like for me, so I know tomorrow going out and doing 20K run, I know I'm going to be really fucking hungry, especially because yeah. I am in a, a deficit right now. I am trying to diet a little bit. So I know it's going to be, it, you know, it does have a massive impact. When I've done shoots or shoots or preps or dieted in the past, you know, for me, the easiest way is to keep my training fairly straightforward. Yeah, yeah. You know, machine-based movements predominantly. Yeah, of course, maybe a little bit of free weights and stuff like that. But, you know, what you would call like a, a, a bodybuilding style split was upper, lower, push, pull, legs, full body workouts. And then do all my cardio as quite low intensity, yeah. right? So you're doing it over on the bike or the, the stepper or you're just increasing your steps, you know, and stuff like that because that, it, it keeps your stress down. It keeps your recovery down. There's not as much of a hit to the mm. central nervous system. And when you start throwing in big runs, fucking big intense workouts, wads and all this kind of stuff, naturally, your body's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm. What the fuck's going on here? Like, I need some food. I need to fuel this. Yeah, It doesn't like it. So... Yeah, I think again, some a lot of people go into this this field, should we say, thinking that it's going to make fat loss easier when actually it makes it a hell of a hell of a lot harder. Yeah, I mean, I did literally. I went for a Monday morning. I tried to go for a five kilometer PB, which I've not tried to do yet with the running. I've just kind of run to see yeah. how I was getting on. But I actually woke up being like, no, I'm going to really go for it this morning and see what I could do. Got fucking robbed. Um, sort of. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm take <laughs> right. I'm taking it as a PB because I was a good over a minute quicker than my previous time. Yeah. And I ran the exact same route that had been 5.1 kilometers the last two times I've done it. And for whatever reason, this time I stopped the, because I was tracking it on the app thing and I stopped it and it was 4.95. <laughs> and I was like, it's the exact same route. 
<laughs> and I'm 0 0.05 of a kilometer short for some reason. And had but you done it quicker? In I, do, I was at 0 0.05 of a kilometer short. I was about a minute and a half quicker. Okay. Well, so I was really like, good. all right, if I had 10 seconds on for, for that 50 meters, you still got me of, I've still beaten it. Yeah. So I think it was, I think I ended up about 21 minutes, just around 21 minutes for it. Um, I felt fucked afterwards. Like I was felt sick when I was running then for the rest of the morning, I was just starving and yeah. just wiped out. And I was like, doing this two, three times a week. I know it's not specifically doing a 5K two, three times a week, but to that degree of intensity that high rocks training, CrossFit training usually is, fucking sticking to a diet would be ridiculous. Yeah. Like really, really difficult. Yeah, 100%. So yeah, I mean, that was kind of a fairly short one, but it was literally just to, to say we are not. Yeah, no matter what you're going to see over the next month or two of our continued antics and stupid decisions yeah not high not high, high rocks not hybrid we're not hybrid athletes we're literally just two barely idiots. even an athlete yeah two <laughs> two idiots who've decided to do a marathon <laughs> which is and we're not even doing an official one no. which is going to be the hardest bit about it by the way because the crowds are what carry you really 100 percent. like physically like pick, physically pick you up and carry yeah. you because that would be really nice but like that would make life a lot easier but like genuinely though they are like yeah. one without a doubt like when I did the half marathon, uh, that was a PB for me. There's no way that you would do anything like that if I was on if I was on my own. Well, I'm thinking we'll get Ben to come along to see if he can film it for us. Yeah. And we'll just get him to play like Chariots of Fire in the car as he drives alongside us. Yeah, or like Rocky and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I've also said? So I was actually, I was with someone at, a, um, at the weekend who lives near me. He said, if, if we do it around Manchester, we'll plan a route which maybe goes past like, I don't know, family, friends, clients, and people come out and do like 5K with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. he said he said if you run past my house, I'll come out and do five ten k with you. Yeah, yeah. Are you just to give you a bit of a bit of a lift? Well, yeah, like, that's yeah. actually a really fucking good idea. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you just let three or four people come out and be like, right, come on, yeah, let's yeah. do five k. That's quite nice. I'm setting the pace there. for this for this next five k. Yeah. You know what I mean, or whatever. I thought that was the trouble. Really is that they're all going to be your clients and your friends, and no one's going to know me. Like, yeah, they, they, they all watch. I've got Gary. I'm not getting Gary and Michelle out running there. There's not a chance they're going to want to nah. come out running. Michelle's messaged me a few times. Like, yes, yeah, so. <laughs> running. Yeah, yeah. I might get them to stand at the finish line with a pint for me. See if they'll do that. I'm sure they'll be up for that. <laughs> but no. Um, right. So the fuck up. It's not a fuck up. But it really made me laugh. <laughs> Again, <laughs> we need to change the name. We need to think of a jingle for it. So yeah, we do, don't we? So this is basically, I saw this uh, this article online and it says, it obviously got my attention, the libido effect. <laughs> <laughs> um, expert reveals whether or not sex can replace exercise as debate sparked. So so it, this is what was on your mind in the last episode. It probably was. Yeah, the libido it, it probably was. So if you thought you were putting enough work in the bedroom to skip the gym, then you might be sadly mistaken, which... I knew I wasn't doing <laughs> anyways. <laughs> so Putting in enough work or sadly mistaken. <laughs> Putting in enough work. Yeah, okay. In the slightest. It's sweaty as hard it gets your heart racing. There's no doubt that good tests really can get your body working. Um, but is it a really good enough workout to replace normal exercise? So people are basically saying online that you can do. And then a UAE-based physiotherapist has said you can, but there are a few catches. So he said, it sort of can, but it will require too much effort and time. You might, <laughs> you may need to target some muscles. And there's some stats actually quite funny. So according to Sheridan, six minutes of sex burns about 21 calories. That's not a lot. It's not a lot. That's not a lot. Which means I burn about three calories. <laughs> 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 I was like, fucking hell. <laughs> Um, so to transform it into a meaningful routine, you would need to be getting down and dirty for, uh, for three or four times a day for half an hour each time, burning between 315 and 420 calories. You'd have no time for anything else. Nah. You'd have no energy for anything else. You'd have no energy for any, anything <laughs> else. Yeah, yeah, you, would. <laughs> you wouldn't. So it's certainly possible, but unless you and your partner have really... <laughs> it's not possible. I've really got nothing to do at all every day, which, yeah, um, it might be a little bit more difficult to fit in. So, yeah, basically. Um, if you can't get to the gym, try and get some three or four times a day. Yeah. For half an hour. Try and get some action for 30 to 40 minutes per day, um, and, and you should be able to replace your, uh, your training. I think... Probably won't make it into the training plan, that one. No. <laughs> Imagine. It, so cardio for this week, right? Can't get to the gym to do cardio this week, yeah. yeah. What's the missus up to? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, so uh, quite, it just that's made me- really low. That's like- it, it, I know, I know. It really tickled me. I, mainly because I was like, Jesus, like, I am not expending much when I- <laughs> And also, who's, who's going in to do that, right? Who's getting into the bedroom? I'm thinking, oh, buzzing. This is going to burn some calories as well. This is going to help. Like, I'll tell you who's like- the, the, the extreme bodybuilders, that's who's doing it. Yeah, They're tracking it. They are 100% yeah. tracking that. 100. Uh, to be like, that pff, I remember that was re- when time. I was young and I was trying to like get myself into shape. I used to think, oh, maybe that will add a little bit on. <laughs> I mean, for my time... It's a shame you weren't getting any of yeah, it. No, no, yeah, exactly. I <laughs> don't know if wanking's the same. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> right. right this episode has taken a right turn, hasn't <laughs> it? <laughs> the libido effect. Right, okay, let's finish that episode there. You don't have to like this one this time. Yeah. Don't don't share it. Don't share it. Don't share it. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> we don't want anyone listening to this one. Your mother will be disgusted that you're talking <laughs> about that. Right, cheers, guys. See you in a bit. In a bit.